assessment, they are probably the most advanced. They have a pilot program, which came up a little bit a minute ago. They have a pilot program where there was an opportunity for firms to submit CMC information that basically demonstrated what QBD was. And the idea was for us to get a better idea from the company what type of information they had that we could find useful in uh, uh, reviewing for QBD, uh, since we had no experience. We received nine original applications and three supplemental NDAs. Uh, the common factors in all of them were they tried to uh, address design space, the use of risk assessment, and they were looking for proposals for regulatory flexibility under the firm quality system. Uh, all nine were, uh, let me say, uh, eight have been approved, one is still in the uh, works, and the three supplements have been approved. But it's taken a lot of work. We focus directly on this. In the meantime, we've received applications that are not under the pilot, outside the pilot, that have QBD elements in them. And we've actually learned more from those, you know, than we have from a lot of the stuff in the pilot. We're in the process of developing, mainly for training, case studies, lessons learned, or what we've seen. Uh, we have uh, had a number of workshops and internal training, training. We are planning some more workshops. Actually, ICH is in the process of planning the workshop on implementation of quality by design. So there's a lot of training going on. One of the things that I, I do want to stop and mention here, I talk about quality by design. But as far as I'm concerned, quality by design is just a tool to get us where we want. We're really looking for quality, and you can call it anything you want to. Uh, you can call it PAT, call it anything. It's still the ideal thing is to improve quality. Uh, we're also in the process of uh, a sh uh, additional experience, trying to get additional experience in helping to enhance our regulatory knowledge. So uh, we've been working with a lot of uh, contractors and, as I said, too, trying to fill some of the scientific gaps and really trying to understand more about some of the complexities of manufacturing science. Now, as far as the Office of Biotech Products and QTV, they're just starting. They just issued their pilot uh, a couple of months ago, their call for applications. And they're really, too, looking to see what information is out there and uh, how it differs from doing an NBA or small molecule in the information that you want to receive. Uh, we've got five BLAs and two supplements so far, which is quite a bit of work for uh, us in the Office of Biotech products. Uh, we're also, too, working on case studies. In fact, in late October, we're going to need to a huge case study. It's about 300 pages out. <coughs> that we're going to try and work through and determine how best to apply that to what we're doing. And we also have had workshops and training. But I will say that actually the biotech industry is a little bit more complicated in implementing quality by design, mainly because of the complexity of some of the products, uh, the difficulty in identifying what critical quality attributes are in many cases there's more than you can count or think about. Uh, characterization is a difficulty and really, you know, the clinical aspects of ensuring safety and efficacy can be tricky. But in some ways, we feel like the biotech industry is ready for quality by design. And so, uh, we were talking last night, they're sort of the teenagers of the drug world, and so, you know, they're already uh, active and interested in making changes and doing it well. So, we're really looking forward to meeting with them. We have several workshops, as I said, playing. Um.